bigger is not better. A new United Nations report on the right to food has found that contrary to conventional wisdom on fighting hunger in the world's poorest places, large-scale farming is not as efficient as smaller, more diversified, and ecologically friendly farms. The report finds that these smaller farms have the potential of doubling food production in the next 10 years in the places that need food the most. Olivier de Schuter is the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food. He wrote the report. We reached him in Brussels. Mr. de Schuter, first of all, you call for a fundamental shift toward agroecology and eco-farming. Can you explain what you mean by those terms? Well, you see, we have developed agriculture until now basically by industrializing agriculture further, by creating an agriculture that is heavily dependent on external inputs such as chemical fertilizers, pesticides, by mechanizing the work on the farm. Instead, there are ways of developing agriculture that mimic nature instead of mimicking the industrial processes, using the waste produced on the farm as um, fertilizers for the soils, combining plants with trees and with animals in a much more cyclical approach to farming, which essentially tries to replicate the cycles of nature instead of um, developing agriculture in a way that is based on industrial processes. And that is essentially what agroecology means. What are the pressures? What has made so many farmers around the world turn to the me- these highly mechanized, highly industrialized models of food production? Well, that's the kind of uh, advice they've been given, and it's the kind of support that they've received. In many cases, the governments have tried to support their producers, their farmers, by providing them with subsidized inputs, uh, chemical fertilizers, pesticides, tractors sometimes, despite the fact that this way of supporting farmers was not sustainable. It was extremely expensive for the governments, and they had no exit strategy. So when the money runs out, when the donors um, are tired of supporting this kind of support scheme, very little is left that that farmers can can use in order to continue to, to produce in appropriate conditions. And now we have to realize that agriculture is not sustainable if it continues to be as highly dependent on oil and gas as it, as it is in, in OECD countries, and that there are simply other ways to make it productive. What kind of response have you had so far to your report? Well, the governments which have uh, discussed the report in Geneva before the Human Rights Council, where the report was presented, were overwhelmingly supportive of the conclusions. And they understand, I think, that we cannot continue to have a system in which the price of food production is very closely correlated to the price of fossil energies, the prices of which will be increasingly volatile and high in the future as we meet peak oil and peak gas. And so they they understand that the current situation is not a sustainable one, and they were, um, I think, very interested in seeing that there are alternatives that can work. The question is, of course, whether concrete measures shall be um, adopted by these governments and whether we can um, basically uh, get rid of this addiction to the kind of inputs that we've been using up to now in industrial farming. The addiction, has it not come from a tremendous amount of pressure, subsidization, marketing from giant agribusiness companies who have been selling these countries, the, the chemicals you refer to for fertilizers, the, the equipment that depend on fossil fuels, and the patented seeds? Well, absolutely. It's clear that the current system um, has been beneficial to all these actors which um, sell these products and import these products in developing countries. And in fact, unfortunately, um, some donor countries may be tempted to Uh, support agricultural development in developing countries by at the same time supporting their own producers of inputs and their own exporters of of agrochemicals. But there is nothing in this for agribusiness, what you're describing with this kind of uh, small-scale farming and agroecology. There'd be very little profit for the multinational uh, agribusiness companies. Well, that is correct, Um, perhaps with one proviso, which is that there is an increasingly large market for 
organically produced foods, including in the Northern Hemisphere. So food that is produced according to sound eco-farming principles. But I agree that it is um, certainly not uh, a very large market up to now, although it is an expanding market, and that it remains a relatively niche economy uh, for organic uh, produce. If it, this is the best, possibly the only way to provide f food for the 9 billion people you've described in this report that will, who will need it urgently by 2050, would it be immoral to do otherwise? Well, it's not an either-or uh, situation we are here between um, sustainable types of farming that are low external input and, on the other hand, the use of classic industrial types of farming, um, which in many regions are well established, which will um, find it very difficult to make a transition towards more sustainable types of farming. But we need to plan this in the long term because we will not be able to continue to develop food systems that really have uh, their departure point in the gas fields of Russia or in the oil fields of, of the Middle East. That is extremely dangerous. It is not sustainable, and it creates a, a, a real Damocles sword on, on weighing on the food system that we have. Mr. De Schutter, thank you. You are very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Olivier de Schutter is the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food. We reached him in Brussels.